Hi ho, fellow unethical listeners. Callie here to bring you the latest delicious scoop for all of what's been happening behind the scenes here with the unethical family. Um, first off, the unethical team would like to formally apologize for the delay in release dates. Uh, we had a medical emergency in the unethical family, but not to worry, everyone is a okay now. Um, next, we would like to thank all of you for your understanding during this time and a big, huge thank you um, for all of your continued support. And we love providing this content for you. Um, it's always so much fun uh, hearing your feedback on the group on Facebook. Um, you guys are wonderful. So thank you so much for that. Um, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up for you. Um, so make sure you're paying attention because <laughs> we will be here. We're not going anywhere. You're stuck with us. Um, and finally, we have a very exciting announcement for you guys. Um, we have a new Halloween merch that is available at our online store. Um, if you use the coupon code UNCULT10, that's uncult one zero. Um, on our store, you will receive 10% off until November 1st, so that's exciting. Um, for all of our links for our stores and updates for show notes and uh, teasers for upcoming episodes, please uh, join our Facebook group. Um, it is called Unethical, the official unethical podcast group. Um, so if you like what you're hearing, join us on Patreon. And there's plenty more where that came from. Again, thank you all so much for your continued support. We love you all so much. Huge bushes on all of you. Take care. Welcome to Unethical Podcast. Oh, guys, I was a victim of theft recently. Did they steal your sense of style or? He lost his virginity. No, I had this like <laughs> really nice jacket that I bought for hunting. Okay. Some freaking disabled prick in a wheelchair. I left it on my gazebo. He grabbed it and took off. Tell you, man, that, bastard, that bastard can hide, but he can't run. Oh. <laughs> uh. I think I, also, I think that's like the best time to just start this episode. Honestly, <laughs> it's like the best. Can, can I try one more? Can I try one more okay, to start do it? it? Okay, what's the hardest part of a vegetable to eat? The wheelchair. Uh, so I was gonna say the hospital bed, but yeah, wheelchair's good too. <laughs> you let, let you know, Cal. It's less cut this out. Cut this yeah, out. you're so deflated. Look at you. Sorry, <laughs> so sad. Chat. I'm um, just yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember a dirty joke. I know. Oh, let's hear it. What's the hardest thing in the world? I don't know. Putting it in soft. I have no context to that joke. I've touched willies. I've touched two <laughs> willies. I've touched two willies, but that's as far as I got. I was not interested. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, but you're going to need to sort that out yourself. Very, very sorry, but I'm gay. It's unfortunate. <laughs> but you have convinced me that I'm gay. <laughs> no. <laughs> The fact that that women even are interested in men is proof sexuality isn't a choice. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how we I don't know how we or we won that or even have a chance. Uh, that's actually a funny way of putting it. Pretend I'm in a coma, guys. Finally, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are the only four people that are going to be looking after me. How many? How long does it take before you're just like pull the plug, let him fucking die? Wait, do I have to do anything to look after you? Oh, yeah. You have to come by. You have to, like, uh, make sure the nurses are doing their shit properly. Like, you guys are just doing the regular upkeep to someone who would be in a coma. Come visit me. Yeah. Were you, like, in a car accident? I am. In, I have been told to you by doctors there's nearly no chance of me ever coming out of this. Peace thing. out, Girl Scout. If it's a Tuesday, I will pull the plug on a Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Because it's Tuesday. Same day, bro. Same day? <laughs> Yeah, if I'm told okay. you're never waking up, I'm not going to leave you like that. Fuck no. 
That's nice of you. I have follow-up questions. <laughs> sure. Is your doctor hot? Mm? <laughs> is he like is he like a George hot or like a McDreamy kind of doc? Sloan? That's what we need to know. Excuse me. Very hot. Very hot. He's a very good looking doctor. Yeah, but he's very married, but he also is down to fuck. So there's no even like you could just fuck. Like it doesn't even matter. If that's what you're looking for to have be around the hot doctor, he'll fuck you for sure. Okay, okay. So he's he's DTF. DTF. You are in a coma permanently. You're not gonna wake up. Yeah. How long will I keep you plugged in? Yeah. As long as it takes for me to convince him to leave his wife. <laughs> Can you still get, like, are your muscles still working or are you deformed? You can't have sex with someone in a coma. Uh, can't and shouldn't are two very different words. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm in a persistent vegetative state. Yeah, but are you mangled? No, no, I've looked normal. I look fine. I have all only voluntary, only involuntary functions. Everything else gone. Did you just yeah. say involuntary functions? Yeah, just my involuntary functions. So you are... get erections. Yeah, yeah. excellent. No, I'm yeah. leaving you. I'm I'm letting people come in and fuck you, man. I'm making a fortune. <laughs> you're, you're you're charging people at the yeah. door. That is exploitation. Is it? If you... so, he'd want that. He would want me to exploit him. <laughs> I didn't even know that was an option. I didn't even think that was an option. I that's in my living will now. If that's an option, <laughs> come on. No, it's it not is. exploitation if I want it. You're you're pre-consenting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to ask the person what they want when they walk in. I was like, do you want him to have consent? Like, I do you want him to be giving consent? And they're like, no, I want it to be like CNC. I want it to be like, I want it to be a little bit rapey. Oh, okay, well, he hates this. And then just send him in. I'm just going to make people's dreams You know what? Through. Think about it. Think of all the rapists who could get their energy and anger out in a non-harmful harmful way. <gasps> We're going to be helping society. <laughs> we got to give the rapist fucking vegetables. This is hilarious. Okay. Uh, <laughs> never saw that one coming. <laughs> Wait. We could do all th- like we could do so much with this. Like we could we we could solve all sexual deviants. Dress him up as I don't know, a transvestite. <laughs> like we got all sorts okay. of things we could do. No, okay, no. There is no possibility with Richard that we will be able to do anything with straight rapists, okay? It's not It's No, not he's, he's, he's upset, though. He's like, come we on. We don't know what he looks like without a beard. Wait till I shave. You're going to no, see why I hide it. It's not You're happening. You're going to see why I hide it. It's not happening. I'm sorry. I would be so offended if I was you, Richard. You should be like, I am a beautiful woman. Richard, <laughs> a straight man will never fuck you. You need to accept this. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah? Oh, is that a challenge? Yeah, go and get him. Go and get him, Richard. <laughs> I vow by the end of 2021, I will be fucking a straight man. All right. See, that's not the same thing. No one's going to come in and pay me, okay, to have sex with you. That is my point. No straight man is going to do that. I disagree because the amount of people that the amount of people in the world that are into fucked up things, there is going to be some straight man out there who looks at Richard and goes, "That's my moment." I've had a frumpy small dick fetish my whole life. Now it's finally coming to fruition. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about, let's talk about this then. Uh, have you guys ever heard of Terry Schiavo? No. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about her then. Uh, Teresa Maria Schindler was born December 3rd, 1963 in Lower Moreland Township, Pennsylvania. She had dreams of becoming a veterinarian. Uh, even as an adult, she was known for taking in stray cats, dogs, anything she could pet. As a child, she had two gerbils named Starsky and Hutch. Kind of cute, kind of fun, kind of like it. Lame. She was actually didn't have close to the grades to become a veterinarian at all. So Riddling. she lost that dream quite early. She was not very good at school. Is this is not me being rude? This is like m- multiple articles telling me this. Which why did they have to point that out? I don't know. So I'm pointing <laughs> it out too. Like. <laughs> No, this is a good thing. She was halfway to brain dead already. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, she attended Catholic high school. Oh, actually Catholic school her whole life, basically. Graduating from Archbishop Wood Catholic School in 1981. Wood. Terry was a big girl. She weighed 250 pounds by the end of high school. And she was five foot six. She sounds hot. Yeah, no, exactly. But I mean, people listening, when I'm saying she's a big girl, I don't care. It's just part of the story. She's 250 pounds. Body positive. That's right, Richard. Way to go. Yeah, yes. For sure. Yes, queen. And- 
All right. So uh, the year after high Whoa! school. Oh, sorry. She was 113 kilos. I, I had no frame of reference oh. for 250 pounds. I was like, okay. I was like, <laughs> cool. Is that, is that like 90 or is that 300 kilos? Big girl. She's not big. Why are you guys freaking out? It's really not they that big. They called her obese and shit in the articles. Like all the articles are calling her obese and stuff. That's not obese. According to, according to the BMI scale, yes, yeah, she would be obese. But I mean, it's, uh, it's all muscle mass, shit like that, that they don't take into account for it. Yeah. I've been bitched at standing as I am today at five foot fucking three and a half, 170 pounds. Like I'm told yeah, I'm, I get, I'm I'm technically obese. Yeah, it's for sure obese. But anyways, she's obese. Fine. Uh, we'll give it to the fucking obesity people. You got this one. You got Shivo as a teenager. She's yours, obesity people. All right. <laughs> then uh, the year after high school, she lost a uh, hundred pounds. Now that would be what? However many kilos, I didn't look. Pounds is actually what I use for weight measurement. So thanks, America, for making me dumber. I should know kilos for this. But now I have to follow your American stupidness. Thanks. Um, But yeah, she lost 100 pounds the year after. She did this by watching her diet and exercising. And she was also on the Nutrisystem diet. MLM. Yeah, multi-level marketing, uh, fad diet things. Doesn't work. Usually don't work, but they work for uh, Terry. She well, lost, she lost 30 pounds. kilos. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, good for her, you know. Mm-hmm. Then she went to Bucks County College, Community College in 1982. This is where she met Michael Shivo. They fell head over heels with each other right away. Michael was actually Terry's first boyfriend. She, he was actually the first guy she ever kissed. Aww. Well, duh. She was 250 pounds in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that joke. <laughs> Michael was the first guy Terry ever kissed, dated, talked to pretty much probably uh, when she went to college. And then they were like engaged five months in. Oh, that is, that is, that is lesbian fast. Like five months into a relationship. Most lesbians are married with, (laughs) with a house and you hold by two weeks in, but that is fast. They were married like less than a year later in November uh, at Terry's Catholic church in Southampton, Pennsylvania. Uh, she's 21 years old at this point and she weighs 145 pounds. So she's down 105 now. I thought you couldn't have gay weddings at Catholic churches. They weren't gay. Terry's a, a, uh, a woman. Oh <laughs> yeah. Her name's Teresa. <laughs> Her name's Teresa, but she goes by Terry. <laughs> we were talking about lesbians that threw me off. <laughs> I got you. I understand how you got mixed up there. I understand where the wires crossed. I, I've been away from Tally too long. I got the Tally back up there. I understand where that crossed. I, I always assume everybody's a lesbian, so I'm, I'm on the same page as you. I assume everyone's female. I assume everyone's straight. Every time I hear, like, my girlfriend from a woman, I'm like, ooh, plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the couple wanted to have kids right away. They were ready for children. Oh, biggest mistake. <laughs> uh, crazy. Can confirm. Terry missed her period in 1985. They went to the doctor, found out she wasn't pregnant. Sad girl, but she missed her periods, which is a little weird. Um, no, it's not. Well, it will be. It's not textbook. I meant in this. I meant in this instance, it's weird. I should have. I should have said. Okay. That. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Because she was always constantly having like. She was regular. Yeah, regular. That's what they're called. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're called, he says. Oh. All right. Oh, boy. So in January 1986, Terry's parents, Bob and Mary Schindler, moved to St. Petersburg, Florida. Terry and Michael follow three months later, starting over in a new city. Now, this actually, I'm actually excited Bo's here for this next little part. Terry loved being near her parents, and Terry and Michael were already having a hard time scraping by where they were, so they didn't mind moving, and it was easy for them. Terry worked at... Uh, she got a job at a insurance place like Prudence Insurance and Michael managed restaurants at night. Now I can't figure out what this means. Cause they say he managed restaurants at night. Like how many restaurants does one guy fucking do? But I did find out that he was a, a manager of a McDonald's back in Pennsylvania. So maybe he just managed like fucking 15 McDonald's at nighttime in Florida when he moved there. That's the only thing I can come up with. Yeah. No? I'm an area manager. So I've got oh. five. So I got five stores. What a flex. What a flex. <laughs> <laughs> Work for McDonald's. There's other people, like most people have a bunch of five. I think the most one, the biggest ones that I know is uh, one of my colleagues has eight. 
So they, we look after them, but no one manages only at night. <laughs> like I don't, I don't strictly go there between five and eight. <laughs> but this job before was McDonald's. It didn't say McDonald's later. It just said restaurants at night. So I assumed it was some chain thing, but I mean, anyways, you worked at night. It might not have been at McDonald's. I was just curious how that worked, but yeah, that doesn't a make sense. Manager. He, he might be a clothes manager, which means he'd work like, well, for Australia, it's like two ten, four twelve, 12 every night, five days a week. But yeah, so Terry had a day job at that insurance place anyway. Mike worked at night. Not usually good for a relationship to never see your partner. Uh, and repeatedly, uh, reportedly, they're having a lot of, they're fighting a lot around this time. Uh, Michael later says that not all relationships are perfect. And sure, they did fight, but it wasn't anything they weren't going to get over. Because they specifically asked him, like, have you, were you fighting with Terry before this happened? And we're going to get to what happened in a second. But I just wanted you guys to know they have like a rift going on right at the wrong fucking time. All right. She starts losing weight again, actually. And then in 1987, she goes back to the doctor and is like, we're still not getting pregnant. Uh, what's going on? Uh, she weighed 121 pounds at this point. By this time, Terry was full bulimic. No one knew, though. She was, like, hiding it pretty good. People would see her take big meals and stuff like that. And she disappeared for time in the washroom. And nobody really knew. I think Michael knew, but he didn't want to admit to it because he lived with her. He just kind of... But nobody really knew, so... Sorry, do we know what her relationship with crack or drugs was? No, no relationship at all. They're like super Catholic, like schoolgirl, uh, live right beside her mom or her brother lives next door. Like, I, do, I doubt it. Just from, from reading about it, I maybe. I've gotten all of my crack from church. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> not me. But she's trying to get pregnant. So I don't think, I don't know. Well, she's not taking care of her body anyways. Yeah, she's but... bulimic and trying to get pregnant. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, that's right. Everybody who's trying to get pregnant takes really good care of their body. That's right. I, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I doubt it. But maybe drugs are a factor, but it's never come up anywhere. And it would have, trust me. Uh, if, it, if there was any type of drugs, we would have heard about it for sure. hundred percent. If the Schindlers heard this, like Bob or Mary, I guess Bob's dead now, but if Mary ever heard this, she would deny it up and down. They deny that she had any type of eating disorder at all. Uh, even to this day. So <sighs> come on, Bob. I don't know. Maybe she didn't, but it, all the evidence points towards that. She did. All right. Uh, doctor's diagnosis is point that she did, but anyways, we'll move on to the next thing. Yeah. She, for two years, they still weren't getting pregnant. And then Terry misses her period again. And then she's like, I'm going to go see a gyno now. All right. So she goes and sees the OBGYN. Neither the family physician or the gyno can figure out why the couple are having such a hard time conceiving. So by the end of the 80s, she's undergoing fertility treatments. And she'd slim down even further to a meager 110 pounds. That's very slim. It's very slim. With her build, that's, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Siri. What is 110 pounds in kilos? 110 pounds. Oh, 49 kilos. Jeebus. A strong wind did take her away. Yeah, like 66% of her weight, basically. Like <laughs> uh, two-thirds of her weight, you know? Or not that much, but close Oof. to it anyway. She lost more than half, which is scary. So on February 25th, 1990, Terry collapsed in the bathroom of her apartment, suffering from a heart attack. Michael woke up to the thud of her falling opening the door to the bathroom to see her collapse and immediately called 911. I call bullshit. If someone's 49 kilos and they fell on the ground, it'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's no thought. Yeah, sack of feathers. Yes. <laughs> she floated to the ground softly. He opened the door. She blew away in, in, into the wall. That's what happened. And he caught her in the peripheral of his vision. Okay. He saw something wafting in the wind and he caught her in the peripheral. <laughs> he had to, like chase her like a plastic bag in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, come here. <laughs> The most beautiful bag in the world. Beautiful bag in the world. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, yeah, bullshit. Anyway. Paramedics show up 11 minutes later. That's fast. That's good. That's a good response time. Especially in Florida. Holy shit. Michael says he cradled his wife until the paramedics arrived. Uh, but the paramedics say when, when they get there, she has no pulse and uh, she's laying face down in the hallway, which... I think that's both things are true. I think he cradled her and then went, as soon as he heard, he ran up to go get her and like kind of just flopped her on the ground kind of thing, tried to rush them But he in. put a paperweight on her first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put his shoe on her. He didn't, he didn't. And she she drifted into the hallway. Yeah. No, she was face up, leaned against the wall, but she just like flew down when they opened the door and the draft came in. But <laughs> well, why not try CPR? 
You probably break her sternum, but you know, whatever. Yeah, to save someone's life, you're supposed to do that shit, right? Break as much bones as you can to save. Them. Oh, you break ribs for sure. Ribs for sure. This is two years since they started trying to get pregnant. They were still going for it was like four or five years. Yeah, them trying to get pregnant. Basically, their whole marriage. It was just two years since she went to the doctor the last time, and she still wasn't getting pregnant after those two years. And then she had she missed a period. So she has potentially been bulimic for since high school, a decade. Which would absolutely cause irregular periods. Is not a good diet, and oh yeah, you have a lot of potassium in your system from throwing up sorry it wasn't a decade it was five years she was okay uh she was 26 when this happened so it would have been five years she was bulimic basically five maybe four she probably always had tendencies though too you know probably got teased also at high school yeah Mm -hmm. yep trauma trauma will start it body dysmorphia or what is it called body dysmorphia yeah body dysmorphia it's real Yes, my doctor told me, my doctor told me I had body dysmorphia. I know I have body dysmorphia, but I was once yeah. not in the shape I'm in. I think I'm buff, but everyone kept telling me I'm fat. I don't know. <laughs> That's just an overinflated ego. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that I'm built like Skeletor. I there's no dysmorphia here. I have a clear understanding that I'm a twig. I I used to oh, I fluctuated I fluctuated weight a little bit um in my life, and I did the reason that I, I when I was in high school I was bulimic for about eight months. And then the doc, I was at the doctors and they told me that if I kept going the way I would, I'd lose my back teeth. And I was like, Oh God, I can't be that. That's horrible. And then that's what, if that's what f- um, freaked me out enough to really, right. Cause your stomach acid. Yep. It's the stomach acid. eats away your teeth. It'll rot your whole esophagus. Everything. It's gross. I literally now have to wear, I, I just now have to wear pretty much the same clothes every day because I don't have any like, I don't have a cognitive understanding of what my body actually looks like. Like I sent someone, my boss had to buy me a pair of pants for something. I can't remember what it was. And she goes, what size are you? And I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm a 40. And I was a 34 at that point. So she brought it home and it was six inches too big. Like she holds, I put on the pants and I was like, oh, like I literally have no idea. Like I don't have, I think that I'm about, I think I'm about four or five sizes bigger than I actually am. Well, because, because I lost so much weight, I do have like saggy skin or whatever. And it's not dramatic at all. Like I don't need surgery, but I do get asked a lot. Like how far along are you? No. When are you due? And I'm like, Oh wow. And they're like, Oh, do you know what you're having? And normally I'm like, yeah, I think pizza later. Um, I had like peanut butter toast earlier today. What are you having? So I've gotten really good at the answers. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that's so offensive. Have people not learned you don't just assume my favorite thing is when I, because I, with Lara, I was I was a whale with Lara and I was a whale at the front. So if I was standing or looking away, you couldn't tell I was pregnant. But if I turned on the side, like I was ginormous with Lara and I was like seven or eight, seven or so months pregnant. And one of the guys I work with was standing there. His name's Ash. And he stands there and he goes, oh, how are you? And then I was like, oh, you know, big, fat and pregnant. And he's like, oh, I didn't. Are you pregnant? And I was like, Cut, too far. Like I'm obviously pregnant, you idiot. And he's like, you never assume. You never assume if you see that baby's head coming out, you still don't assume. <laughs> Just be prepared to catch it either way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't ask that anymore. You yeah. Know, that's just, just don't even, even if you think they are, just don't even bother asking. That's what I say. Yeah. That's so rude. I, uh, poor Richard. He's waiting so patiently. We've just derailed. I'm sorry. Have you met Richard? Have you met him? <laughs> I have, but he is hosting. I have to oh, be boo. nice. He doesn't care when we're hosting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm trying to figure out where I was. God damn it, laugh at me. Oh, you- <laughs> <laughs> you me? oh my yeah. God. The tell is the funniest. So 11 minutes doesn't seem like that long of a time, uh, but she had 11 minutes with no heart beating, so no oxygen going to the brain. Um, it only takes four to six minutes to cause serious damage to a brain. So a 26-year-old Terry falls into a coma right after her heart attack. Um, she's rushed to a hospital. And paramedics had it. Uh, paramedics had to intubate and ventilate her. Tests are done later at the hospital that revealed uh, Terry had hypokalemia, which is basically low potassium, very low compared to like a normal person. Hypokalemia is actually like a symptom of bulimia. Is that is that the potassium thing? Very low potassium. 
yeah. low potassium. Okay. Uh, it can give you like leg cramps, tiredness. She should have been like, there would have been a lot of signs, mm-hmm. but I guess since they probably weren't around each other all the time, daytime, nighttime job, they, he probably didn't notice or didn't notice enough to make you think, be worried about it. People get good at hiding their bad habits. Uh, she also had an electrolyte imbalance, which is often caused by drinking excessive fluids. Uh, it was later found out that her diet consisted uh, for the past couple of years of only iced tea. She drank <laughs> 10 to 15 glasses of iced tea a day. She should have done green tea. <laughs> she should have done Long Island. Green tea is the one that they use for weight loss. She probably did do green tea. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, iced tea is probably sweet. She was probably like, that was probably like her treat. Wasn't sweet tea, though. Yes. Yeah. It's- very southern to have like a big old glass pitcher of of uh, uh, sweet tea or iced tea, like American iced tea. Depends on which generation you're talking to. Yeah, hypokalemia and electrolyte imbalances are both heart pro- like they'll both cause heart problems. That's why she had a heart attack at 26. It was a heart attack. That's crazy. I forgot it was a heart attack. That's, that's she had a heart attack. Yeah. When she's at the hospital, they put her on a ventilator because she couldn't breathe on her own, and they also had to insert a feeding tube, a peg tube is what they call it. <laughs> yeah that's what i thought too you fucking insert that peg peg me, peg me. <laughs> i didn't get it so you... okay yeah but they put a peg that thing that thing goes they cut they drill a hole right into your be- stomach and they just put like slush into your stomach that's fucking nasty yeah and they have to yeah. feed you like with a with a tube like uh like a syringe but like they just put the shit yeah in the syringe make yeah. sure there's no clumps and then like slowly oh. inject it and you have to inject it from above the heart i have i have no problem with the amount of money those yeah. people make she's a she's in a coma so they keep her on the peg tube and everything but only uh, it only takes a couple weeks where she emerges from her coma but she's still un- unconscious and non-responsive wait 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 can you please explain to me as a layman person, what is the difference between being non-responsive and unconscious and in a coma? She woke up, like her eyes woke up. She was looking around the room, but she wasn't responding to stimuli. Like people go clap at her face. She wouldn't like go like, Ooh, or anything like that. She would just be there. She was before she was cl- eyes closed in a bed. De- looked like she was almost dead on a ventilator, breathing. Uh, 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 and then she eyes open. They go, Oh, maybe she's got some life to her pull out her fucking ventilation tube. She breathes on her own, which she couldn't do before. And then she's kind of like dead to the world in the room, but she's still not there. Like if there's no gotcha. responsing, she's yeah. not talking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cause I was like, I, I was like, I, yeah. I, my understanding was being unresponsive and unconscious was being in a coma, but that's fine. I'm now educated, edumacated. Thank you. <laughs> there's different. Yeah. There's different levels of this shit. Yeah. So she, they took her off the ventilator, but she wouldn't, uh, she couldn't swallow on her own. They like tried. So they just said, fuck it. We'll leave the peg tube in. So she has that now for the rest of her life. Okay. June of that year. So a couple months later, uh, Michael's granted legal guardianship of Terry, both her person and her property. Uh, but Terry's parents are pissed. They don't know right away, but they find out later because they were never informed of this. Like I thought we were guardians. Like, how do you think that they're married? You fucking morons. Mm-hmm. Anyways. <laughs> You have to change it. Well, in Australia, you have to actively change it. But she was also 26. So after you're 18, you're not guardianship to anyone. Do you not have an ex of kin? Ex of kin would be like, for me, would be Sarah, my wife. spouse. A marriage certificate is, is basically, if there's no marriage certificate, a birth certificate is as good as a, like a will. Well, my shit is set up like through work and the hospital. Like I have shit at both, you know, oh. but... But you're married and what without a will, without a living will or anything like that, everything would automatically like be in limbo. And then James would have to go fight for it to get it uh, to him. So with a will, it goes directly to him. But he is considered it would take like like it took him a couple months to just get like, I am now the guardian of all this stuff after all doing all the paperwork. If you have a will, it goes transfers right away. But then it works its way down the line. Right. Like I would be if I'm in coma, then it goes to Sarah. And if Sarah's not around for whatever reason, all my shit would go in a trust for my kids. And if all my shit wasn't a trust for my kids, then it goes to my, my parents or whatever. Right. Like that's how it just rolls down. However you have it set up, but if you have nothing set up, then you just have to try and get, there's a lot of legal battles that can be fought if nobody knows what you want. Yeah. Right. And this is basically mm-hmm. what this whole fucking case is about. It's like, how the fuck does this get to this point? But this, they weren't, uh, 
uh, let me let me start right off the bat when he got conservatorship they were nobody was fine everyone was good to go with that no one was even there was no like issue with him being guardian at all at first because he moved in with the parents right away uh and they moved terry there as well to like take care of her so they were all living bob mary uh michael and terry were all living at terry's parents house right off the bat and uh michael started to take nursing classes so he could actually learn to uh te- like treat his wife better like how to like take care of his wife a lot better but he was just starting so he didn't know lots about nursing at the time so it was really hard for them to take care of her at first she would have like a lot of like peg emergencies like that's a thing going right to your belly so like I don't know. They'd always have nurses coming over and fixing her wounds inside. It just became too much. But she's at home now. She was at home for like three or four months, okay. not long. But they were all, my point is, they were all being mm-hmm. nice with each other. They're all happy with each other. He was living there, taking courses. Like, they're they're helping each other. It's uh, very hard to take care of someone in a situation like that, I would think. But they had to put her back in the chronic care facility. Three months later, it was too much. I used to care for people like that for for a living. You know, I can't imagine doing that at home as well. You know, like that's just a whole different dynamic. It should be like your safe space. It should be where you can relax, but just high stress and constant supervision. That seems hard. I couldn't imagine. For sure. Yeah. So they were, they were kind of at their wits end. They didn't really know what to do. So Michael starts looking at like alternate options to see if maybe they can jolt her out of whatever's going on. Cause they're not, not really a hundred percent sure where she's at with her medical diagnosis yet. So he brings her to California for an experimental procedure called a thalamic simu- stimulator. And this is a, uh, it was back then it was an experimental treatment. Like the people didn't know, but now it's actually since the late nineties, it's been approved for the treatment of tremors. If people have tremors, uh, but basically what this thing does is it drill a hole in your like thalamus mm. portion before your brain and they'll put electrodes directly in the thalamus area of your yeah. brain. Yeah. And it sends electromagnetic impulses trying to like stimulate the part of your brain that controls movement and muscle function. I'm only telling you this because they install this while they're awake, which I find awesome. But since Terry didn't have tremors, um, did nothing. Ah. <laughs> they just drilled a fucking hole in her head. <laughs> You know what? We're going to try this right off the bat. Yeah. Anyway, so they move back, uh, bring her back to Florida. And while she's there, she finally gets diagnosed with being in a persistent vegetative state, which we're going to call PVS from now on because it's too long to say per- persistent vegetative state a bunch of times. And uh, like I said, that's defined mainly as absence of voluntary action and an inability to communicate or interact purposefully. I was like me after a few beers. <laughs> Interacting. A couple of blunts. Still has to make a joke. I'm not actually listening at all. Sorry. Richard! I, I've bored Celeste. Bob and uh, Mary Schindler disputed the medical diagnosis they dispute the pvs uh because they keep saying they repeatedly saw signs of life they keep seeing her do stuff but involuntary all right with pvs your brain stem still works uh, stuff like breathing sleep patterns blinking still happens you might even like smile a bit cry oh none of it's intentional oh her brain had literally had zero electrical energy coming from an eeg they cooked her up. Nothing. Zero. She was in a P veggie S. She's done. Early on, Michael didn't agree with the diagnosis either. They were both kind of like, never know, man. You know, you kick out of things. Miracles happen, bro. But in the end, it doesn't matter. She was fucking PVS in the end. It was like fucking three or four neurologists by the end. She had PVS. She was out. There was one time where a doctor documented that uh, or sorry nurse documented that there was a signs of pain coming from terry early on okay and the doctor ordered a bone scan because he was like i don't they didn't really have a handle so they thought maybe she might have some broken bones or something i don't know they looked that she had a bunch of previous injuries on her body but it was nothing to relate raise alarms over they moved on until later is is that because she is is that because Sorry. Would her bones yep. have been more brittle because of her rampant bulimia? Definitely. Yeah. 
in reality too they uh said it was more from like well yeah the probably brittle bones for sure was part of it but when she the paramedics showed up they did cpr they fucking moved her a bunch of times they probably just that's what they think it is it's all from the putting in peg tubes like all the medical treatment shit breaks bones and stuff that's what they boiled it down to in the end yeah so nothing really yeah. to raise alarms over uh by the end of 91 so this is two years into her basically two years being into her uh the schindlers tell michael he's still living at their house that he, he should just move on and get on with his life go find Aww. a new girlfriend start to date we'll take care of terry from here and he actually does. He goes out and starts dating girls right away. A couple of years in. No, no, I, it's not right away. It's two years. Fuck, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Good for him. <laughs> no, it's not. They wanted him out of the way. They wanted him to be distracted so that they could make executive decisions about her medical care. Oh, for sure. Crisscross. If they, that goes really well in court if they're trying to fight and they're like, well, he's moved on and he's got himself a new girlfriend, a new family. Like he obviously has no vested interest in her and we've been hanging on and that was a major thing that comes up way later how like the parents tried to use that shit like fuck you anyway so by the end of uh by midway through the next year michael moves out of the schindlers it's probably because he's smashing girls doesn't want to bring him back to his ex-wife's parents house that's kind of weird or is can we pause for sure okay so because this is unethical i have an ethical question sure excellent when you marry someone you agree as long as you both shall live. Yeah. She's still alive. Is what he is doing adultery? Legally or er- ethically or both or morally? Ethically. Yeah, all, all of the above. Well, I guess it depends on what weighting you put a social con- uh, or social, social and economic contract weighting. So if you believe that that has the same weighting in in law as it does in your ethics then i imagine he he is doing a hundred percent the wrong thing depends but you consider death right like technically if someone is brain dead being held kept alive only by machines if that's your interpretation of no she's breathing on her own at this point isn't she is she breathing on her own or she's just yeah it's involuntary though you breathe on your own you don't even think about that all the time no no okay i thought she was on like life support she's off the ventilator but she still has the peg tube if she didn't have the feeding tube she'd be dead she can't feel anything so to 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 tyler's point right you gotta you gotta decide whether you believe that either legally or medically what you believe is like if you believe those definitions of death or if you believe that it comes from when you're non-responsive or unable to process information which we've only got machines to be able to tell us what is actually happening but we don't know what's happening behind the eyelids so if you if you're going by medically and legally he's doing the wrong thing because she's still legally i don't see it that way because um he wanted to stay the only reason he left is because the parents i didn't say i saw it it that way i said from a right he hasn't left coercion i think what he's doing ethically ethically is fine i agree I'm going to tell you right off the bat here. Michael Shivo is one of my heroes now after this episode. He, as long as you, everyone has different relationships. Okay. I don't care who you are. Everyone has different things. And as long as you're open and honest with your other people about what's going on in your life and everyone's playing fair and happy with what's going on, then good on you, man. If you went to all these girls that he was dating and said, Hey, my wife is in a vegetative state. I really am in a weird space. I kind of want comfort, whatever the fuck the conversation ended up being. And they're like, that's really cool. And I'm sorry you have to go through this. And they start to have a little relationship that way. I think nothing is unethical about that at all. That is beautiful. Beautiful, even. Not unethical. But he has gone to say he even believes it's beautiful. I do. It's hard hard to find happiness in, in, ter- in you know, constant turmoil like that. Oh, I guess. Well, okay, Richard, if Sarah was in the exact same state, if you were him and it was Sarah. If I was in the... If you were Michael. The veg- if I was Michael and Sarah was in the vegetative state, yeah, I'd have to. Oh! It, no, oh! but I'd have to. If I'm taking... <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Just, like, lose my... Like, if I still keep this person in my life and still have another life beyond it, I, I don't see what the problem is. I don't see where the... Like, what am I supposed to do? Stay there beside her and go like, I feel so bad for you and myself and everyone else around this situation or just go live your life and make it a part of your life. They were together long enough, right? Where they probably- Five years, yeah. They probably had that conversation once before. 
if something ever happens to me, I want you to move on. If something ever happens to me, please let my children know how much I love them and never stop telling them, blah, 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 blah. James and I have had these conversations plenty of many a times, and we've only been married for six months together for six years, though. I want Christy to never, I, I want Christy to be miserable. Miserable forever. <laughs> Just hate her life forever. <laughs> I want Christy's entire existence to be looking after our children, coming to the hospital and talking shit with me, even if I'm not, even if I'm not responding. <laughs> I'm to sleep with, with, with a picture on her pillow. Your side of the bed has yep. never been touched in yep. seven years. <laughs> Your old socks yep. are still hanging out on the floor. I agree with you too. I don't dust. disagree with you. I, I just, that's not what I would want for my life. But if that's what you wanted for your life and you, what's the, what, getting married to no, someone. No, not for my life. I want Christy's life to be like Well, you're not, that. you're going to be a vegetable anyway. So who <laughs> the fuck. I'm joking, obviously. For Christy's sake. My point is like, if you guys talk and you fuck want to go. Me. Who's shit? Not you. If you ha- talk to the other person. No, this person's no. a vegetable. So it doesn't matter about them. If the other people, if you continue to take care and you think that that's part of your thing and then you still go out and do other things, that's okay. I don't, it doesn't matter. Or if you want to sit there and be sad the whole time, that's okay too. I want Chrissy to strap me to a fridge dolly and take me everywhere she goes. I want, <laughs> I want backpack, me. adult backpack and just your face, like your dead fucking face, just hanging off the side of her cheek all the time. And I want, I want her to act like it's completely normal. So I want her to take me to coffee and I want her to be going for walks. I want her to like tie Louis's leash to me so that when he goes for a run, I'm just scooting behind on a, on a trolley. I want her life to be exactly the same as it is, except with me strapped to a dolly. That's what I want. Have you seen those backpacks with a big dome in the back for your dog? Yeah. Yes. All right. What's Celeste's answer? We missed out on Celeste's answer. Yeah. She's, uh, she asked the question. We'd... Yeah. Um, are they divorced? No. Then yes. You think it's unethical? Yes. Even though his parents are like, get the fuck out of my house. Her parents, right? The Schindlers? Sorry, her yeah. parents are like, get the fuck out. Go find happiness. Yeah, I do. As long as they're still married, you can legally get divorced. Mm. Yeah, he could have. If this is sure. how you feel, if, if you genuinely... I'm with Celeste on that one. If you genuinely feel this way, get divorced. Okay, then... Because every single one of you said, I, 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 this isn't just him. Okay. He is inviting another person into his life with this massive, massive baggage. Yes. People can give consent about what they want, but the fact is when you're in, when you're in a dating phase, when you're, when you click with someone, you don't actually take their baggage into consideration. Their baggage hits you once you've already like intertwined your life with them. And that's when it becomes a problem. And so he is now essentially potentially burdening a bunch of people with this thing that he's dealing with. We don't know how much money he's puking into like the eventual legal battle that comes up. We don't know, you know, we know they don't have any kids. So at least there's that. Yeah, you gotta be able to walk away. Like if you're gonna treat, make that decision, you gotta walk away completely. You need to cut there. ties, I think. I think the right thing to do would be to cut ties with this. If you genuinely believe that she is no longer alive, to the point where death has parted us, then you have no reason to be involved in her situation any longer. We're not there yet with Michael, but he would—he does get to that point. Right now, he still thinks there's a miracle cure or something good's going to happen. She's going to jostle herself. And he's dating, it. so then it's even worse. Depends on, we don't know if he's telling his dates about his home life. We, for sure, you know. for sure. And we'll, we'll know a little bit more about what he get when he gets an actual girlfriend. Right now, he's just casually dating. Right now, at this point, he's Polly. He's a 1990s Tinder. Yeah. Then I think this is really unethical. Swipe it in the yellow pages. Okay. You, you can't just go back to being 19 or 20. You can't just go back when you're dealing with a trauma that's this large with baggage. That's this and large. this is like 92. So it's not, it's only two years into it. I agree. There, I, there's to that point too, where it's like, it's pretty fast and you still think you, your wife's going to wake up. What are you doing dating? That's true too. Yeah. But he is. He definitely is. Oh God. I love having, I love seeing people's different point of views. It makes me so excited. I love talking about this shit. I'm down with talking hypotheticals though. That's fun. I like semantics. All right. If you had, would you rather have your, lose your sense of uh, sm- set your hearing or your eyes? Like your sense, your sight right now. Like as you are the man, hearing. the myth, hearing. the legend, you'd rather hearing. lose your hearing? Oh, fuck yeah. I'm, I'm hearing too, but Christy is eyesight. Why? Because music is everything. Like music is. Yeah. So is walking to the store. So is like. 
getting food in your mouth. You really underestimate the entire rest of your body, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. He's he goes to the hospital. The doctor says, I'm, I'm sorry, Richard. The blindness is permanent. And he goes, I'll never walk again. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <That's true. laughs> You're talking to a man who just this morning tried to brush his teeth with a live lobster. My God. You guys, uh, like, you guys think you're going to be able to go walk to the store after your eyes are gone? You're just going to be able to get up and go like, I'm good. I'm blind. I'm going to be able to walk I've to seen, the store without I have dying. seen blind people walking. I, I have. have seen blind once people or twice. <laughs> like, at least once. <laughs> Their first day being blind, they're fucked. It takes time to learn how to get around, navigate. Being it also a takes time person. to go without your ears. Like, it takes time to go. It, a, a, a very strong lifestyle change. You stand by yours because I'm on the same team as you. Especially in a, in a post-COVID world where you can't read lips. You can't touch anything either. No, <laughs> I'm with you, Richard. I'd rather lose my hearing, but that's yeah. because I like to draw. So I'd rather lose my hearing. But like you're more you're more functional as a deaf person than a blind person. There's no denying that. How how ableist of you. That is very ableist. I don't know what that word means because I'm fun to be around, but I, know, I, I learned it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to someone who has Tourette's and they were talking about um this person was being <laughs> this person said that if you prayed more to Jesus, your Tourette's will go away. And he's like, that's very ableist of you. Oh, those, that tube thing that you were talking about, Richard, I've got a person who, I, who works for me who I just promoted who has one of those and she doesn't eat. So she can't do overnights because that's when she eats. It so blows my mind. So she has a little tube huh. that comes out of her uniform. And I met her and I was like, <laughs> I met her and I was like, la, 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 la. what is that? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. I thought you finished your story a little while ago. Sorry? Because you went, I met her and I went, <laughs> and I thought that was the story. <laughs> Just the laughing. <laughs> but you <laughs> laughed thinking about what you were about to say. That's what Gypsy Rose had for like all her life. Yeah, it's fucking scary. I don't want to, you guys can kill me. Just so you guys know, I have no problems. If I'm in a PG, if you, like fucking put a towel on my face, just do it. Bold of you to assume that I need or want your permission. Maybe, maybe I get off on unplugging things. God, it must Sick. be so good at your house. That, like he just goes around unplugging the toaster, the kettle. <laughs> <laughs> the phones are never charged. Yeah. <laughs> never survive. They're always dead. And your, your wife's like, God damn it, Tyler. <laughs> I have to be somewhere today. All right, Daddy, take us away. Where were we at to? Ah, <laughs> oh, don't call him that. All right, so in 92, we just talked about how 92 he moved out of the Schindlers because he was smashing other girls. I'm, I'm assuming nobody said it. Just Maybe it's just weird to be there. I don't know. He moved out. Uh, in, later in 92, Michael sued the doctor and the fertility clinic doctors and the gynecologist for not suspecting bulimia as the reason Terry, uh, Terry was not able to conceive. Uh, not one person out of those doctors took blood work on Terry. That would have just showed the lack of potassium and identified what the problem was early on. He was suing for $20 million. He won the case and he was awarded $6.8 million by a jury. Uh, but then it was reduced to $2 million because Terry was found to be partly at fault for her own condition. What? Because she was bulimic. So she wouldn't, none of this would have happened had she just been eating. Oh, so he can force people to do things? No, I'm sure that would be, I'm sure he would get charged for like forcibly trying well, to do someone against their will. Yeah. To something, not someone. Also, that wouldn't fly in today's <laughs> courtroom. Yeah, this is 1992. I think you're right. I don't think that would fly the same yeah. way. Actually, it's because they're mentally ill. So we're going to give you less money. Like, whoa. I don't, I don't think so. I think it would be considered a mental unless you're correct. And I think they would shoot that out of court. But at the time, the jury said, no, you only get $2 million instead of the $20 million you wanted or the $6.8 uh, that you got. But that was appealed by the doctors. And then it was ultimately settled in January 1993 for just over a million dollars. So he got a million dollars. Uh, but three quarters of that million were put into a trust for Terry's care. And the rest went to Michael uh, himself for, quote, loss of companionship. So he got $300,000. For a life. For a life? I'd want more. You should have got more there, but like. I was okay with $2.8 I, I think even 
if they're going to be taking care of Terry for any amount of time, uh, three quarters of a million dollars in America is not going to cover too for too long, right? It's not a very week and a half huge sum, even in the nineties. As we as Americans are all one diagnosis away from being completely fucked, destitute. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah, to use a better word than fucked. <laughs> yeah. More apt. Thanks with your English degree. <laughs> it it blows me. I'm on Reddit a lot. Too much. You can tell. That's that's not a shock. Yeah. Me. Can you? Okay. You seem like the type of guy who would be on Reddit a lot. <laughs> Deep down into the fucking subs for sure. And he's gonna t- he's gonna prove to us why flat earthing is real in a Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, look here. I'll take my drink. I'll pour it on a plate. Okay, and then I'm gonna pour it on a tennis ball, and uh, my point will be proven. It's not gonna stay on a tennis ball. Okay, it's gonna stay on the plate. And I just pretend my drink is the ocean. Uh, no, but the the amount of people in the comments, like you read, and the reasoning behind why Canada's healthcare is garbage compared to the states, and why would we pay extra taxes to take care of people and put the the country in more. De- well, because you don't bankrupt a family and make them sell their house because the kid broke his leg, falling out of a swing. And I'm sorry, but it's barely that much more in taxes. I don't know the exact numbers, but let me just like make shit up real quick because I mean, it's that fucking similar. So Americans pay like 1.9% annual taxes, blah, blah, blah. Canadians pay like 2.5. Yeah. So it is like the, in it, like the most insane it's like the it's like the smallest price to pay. Yeah. In my eyes. For them to give Terry even less than a million dollars. It's a joke. But yes. Okay. So he got 300,000. All right. Up until this point, the shy uh Michael and the Schindlers were getting along swimmingly. They were taking care of Terry, splitting duties. Like the parents would uh, stay afloat, paying for Terry's medical bills by literally doing like bake sales and like raise money for Terry's and stuff out in the community. And they would just scrape by good enough with that. Michael uh, knew that she was a vain person. I shouldn't say vain, but like she liked to dress up and, and wear makeup and stuff like that. So every day he would bring her new clothes. He would... Uh, put makeup on her he put make uh perfume on her he'd bring her to the mall and bring her get a haircut once a week uh hmm. even after the settlement he actually joined he took uh nursing school he went to school to be a nurse so he took that money just to like better himself for terry in a way but before the uh, as soon as he got the money though the schindler started to get weird they started to ask like where's our money how come we didn't get any money uh and it's kind of understandable to me that they would want the money because they've been taking care of terry too right they've been helping out and it's probably hard on them financially just like it has been for michael but Mm -hmm. he's the guardian i'm sorry he's the husband he gets to choose where the money goes for that 300 he got that money for himself for loss of companionship the 750 was put in a trust for her care and he got to choose how her care was they disputed how he should do the care uh right away they said he, she should be in more therapy or whatever the fuck that means that's what they kept saying but he was like you got to put her in a long-term care unit now she's needs to be taken care of all the time we can't just it, be drilling holes in her head all the time and experimenting on her it's over for her there wasn't much media coverage on this case until 1998 so there isn't really much about why the uh, schindlers and michael started fighting i just know it's these kind of things like he wasn't doing that they were doing this he said she said bullshit i do know there was a fist fight between bob and michael at a certain point oh bob yeah the dad Calm down yeah they fought they fist fought at a point and that was the day they all just quit talking to each other and they still haven't talked since so 1994 ish they just stopped talking so in july 93 the schindlers attempt to remove michael as terry's legal guardian and install them as their legal guardian. Uh, They cited Michael wasn't doing enough to ensure the care of their daughter. So they're saying this guy who is married to our daughter was in a relationship for five years and is now starting to become a nurse to be a better carer for our daughter is not a good enough carer for him. Him. exactly and yeah. when as soon as she brought it to court they laughed her out of fucking court they said uh michael has been described by hospital administrators as quote an a hospital administrator's nightmare because he demanded more <laughs> care for his wife 
at yeah. the expense of the other patients at the facility. He would be there daily being like, why isn't she being rolled over? I don't want her to get a bed sore. The entire time she was in the hospital, not one bed sore. That's one of the things he brags about through his thing. So he was there annoying them. They even had to get a restraining order against him uh, to stay out of the hospital because he was annoying the fuck out of everyone. So he could only come at certain times. That's Good how- job. That's a little narcissistic. That's not, that's court documents. That's putting the care for her over everyone else. Like what about a sick kid? Mm, yeah, but also this is America, right? If he doesn't make a big deal about something, are they going to take it seriously? Ooh. They won't either way. Okay, sorry. Maybe I should describe that better. He would come and be like, do this for my wife. How come it's not done? And they're like, we're looking after other uh, patients. He doesn't know who the patients are. He goes, I don't give a fuck if you're looking after other patients. Go take care of my wife. He would do this every day. He doesn't, he's not going into specifics, looking at charts or anything. He's just annoying them to the point where like, stay out of the facility, asshole. Is he annoying them to do their job or more than their job? It's just... It's not, it's probably what he thinks they should be doing versus what right. they can accomplish at a long-term okay. care facility, right? Okay. It's not, nobody's being unreasonable here. Well, he's probably being annoying, but that's what uh, he probably should be doing is trying to make sure she gets the best out there, right? Um, so when that got laughed out of court, what they tried to do next was they tried to get Michael to get a divorce. They're like, just fucking do it. You're done now. Okay. Get out of her life. We'll take care of her. And... He says, no, they don't like that. And then they try to litigate it at a certain point. They try to be like, let's sue you to get a divorce. Like, let's make that happen in the courts. <laughs> you know how divorced I'd be right now? If that's how divorces worked. If you could just get your in-laws <laughs> to just call you and be like, get a divorce from, I'm going to sue you into it. Like, I'd be fucking so divorced right now. It'd be unreal. Same. Yeah. So that, that also got laughed out of court. Uh, but then, so this is like mid 93 gets all the money and he starts caring for her and he gets into school and stuff. Mid 94, he starts to, ex he starts to accept that Terry is in an irre irreversible state of PBS about a year and a half after suing these people and getting a bunch of money. That looks fucking bad to me. Uh, a lot can happen in a year. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you can get an extra million dollars that the less you spend, the more you have at the end of your wife's life too. Right. Uh, the less the long less long she's alive the more there's in the trust for me to pick up after so that looks fucking shady to me so she is diagnosed with a urinary tract infection and after four years of trying everything he could to save terry michael decides to tell the doctors not to treat the infection and he also gives them a do not resuscitate order so basically ending her life what from a uti she infected don't treat it just let your infection go and then you eventually die yeah turn yeah. septic ew yeah. yeah yeah utis are very treatable too like she obviously got that from not having enough water or whatever you know probably uh all they probably had to do was put antibiotics in her g-tube for sure for sure and and he knows this but he's like it's he's at his wits end with the whole thing i think i think it's just like there's nothing there's nothing here what am i doing right sure He's been doing it for four years now, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And of course the parents protest and they say, come on, Mikey, just fucking don't let her die like this. Uh, and he gives in, he gives in and lets the doctors treat her UTI. So she doesn't die, but he doesn't remove the do not resuscitate. Sepsis probably hurts a little bit. Like that's not a humane thing to do. If you're not conscious of the pain, does it really hurt? If a, if a tree falls in the woods, does it feel the pain if you have no brain? All right. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That didn't, that's not how the sentence goes. Oh, right? no, <laughs> those, that rhyme was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Bravo, sir. Uh, so as the years pass, Michael's still watching and taking care of Terry the whole time. Uh, he does get a girlfriend in mid-1993. Her name's Jody Centazoni. Oh, I thought you were going to say Arius. Almost fell back. Jody Arius? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> You're a poet. Didn't even know it. Yeah, so she in a bunch... Yeah, exactly. So Jody, Jody started dating him in like 93-ish. And she says it's not weird for her. He, he was open about the whole thing right off the bat that he had uh, Terry in his life. And she actually said she admired Michael for sticking by her and actually helping Terry. Does she know about the money? 
she does. Uh, later on in the relationship, after Michael's mom dies, Jody actually takes up a lot of the errands that, that Michael's mom used to do, like the fucking laundry, uh, clothing shopping, buying the makeup, buying the perfume. Uh, so she ends up being a helper as well to the whole thing. Oh, how mm. incredibly selfless of her. Yeah. In reality, like it is a lot of money, but I mean, is it that much money? He's got $300,000 and he used a lot of it in school in America. <laughs> Like, is she really here to fucking pick up the money from this guy? Like, is it really worth that much money to her? Maybe. So we're just going to fast forward to 98 because he's just taking care of her until that point. Uh, that's when Michael Schivo finally files a petition to withdraw Terry's life support. Of course, the Schindlers oppose this wildly. And uh, just as a side note, this is where the media starts picking up on this story. This is where there's a lot of information that comes on. Before this is just like piecing together lots of articles. With the opposition to the petition by the Schindlers, a judge appointed uh, a judge appointed Richard L. Pierce, guardian ad litem, to review the validity of Michael's petition to withdraw Terry's life support. Um, ad litem just means guardian appointed by the court to look after the best interests of the person medically incapacitated. After months of spending time with Terry and her life surrounding Terry, Pierce submits his report at the end of the year. So what he says is he notes that Terry is in a PVS and she's not going to improve. So he's right off the bat. He says, doctor's diagnosis. She is a vegetable. Take a fork in her. She's done. (laughs) Yeah. But this is where this where it gets weird for me with this independent guy. He's like in his report, he says that he believed Michael would have financial conflict of interest in asking for the feeding tube to be removed because he would get the money, the remainder of the trust money. But like that's been six years of, three quarters of a million dollars of like ventilators and shit there wasn't much money left yeah and even if so that's how death works the people that are in charge of like your final wishes are usually the beneficiaries how are you supposed to change that what does that even mean you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like usually that's where that happens so it's such a weird argument for this guy to say but then he also says in the same report that the fucking parents would have a financial conflict of interest too because that would mean michael would have been taken and they'll get the money why are we talking about money on this fucking part? She's fucking, like, it's so stupid. This guy just, he focuses that on the fucking money part, which is dumb. It's been so long. It's, it's not even like he's playing the long game to get money. Like, there's, there's not, there's nothing. There's no money to gain with the medical bills. And like Richard said, it's not like it's $40 million. Like, it, was, it wasn't even one. It was a little over one, yeah. It, it, it just feels a bit like there's, there must be something else because that's not... Like, whatever's left isn't enough to set them up financially, really, for the rest of their life. Like, there's got to be something else behind it. If it was $40 million, like, shiv someone. Like, we'll do what you have to. But, like, it's just not a, it's just not a lot of money. Another thing that he included, which was kind of, like, started to make a little bit more sense, is that he said the only evidence out of anywhere, since she doesn't have a living will, is Michael's hearsay that she said she would never want to be held alive on a respirator for any amount of time. So it's just from him. The wiki, K. Okay, this is where it gets weird because the wiki, uh, all that being said, Pierce's final decision was based on what he thought was best for Terry, and that was to remove the feeding tube. Now, that's from mayoclinicproceedings.org, okay? They say the feeding sh- tube should be removed. And then if you look at the wiki, it says he recommends it not be removed. So I don't know who I'm believing. It's the fucking wiki article. Is it mayoproceedings.org? I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. I would believe Mayo. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, clinic a very uh it's a very high class learning hospital oh okay honestly at the end it doesn't really matter because judge greer uh, like the what was ended up happening was since she didn't have a living will they had to do a trial as to see what her what she would have wanted so they did a little trial uh to see what her wishes would have been and this guy that was the judge for this trial his name was judge george greer yeah, hear the testimonies of Michael and other relatives about Terry's wishes not to be left on life support. Uh, Judge Greer also heard the Schindlers who claimed otherwise because uh, of religious reasons. She would never want to be dead that way because of the super Catholic thing. They also, to Judge Greer, questioned why Michael didn't speak up about her wishes during the malpractice suit. Like, oh, you're bringing this up now. You didn't, we were talking shit like that when there was money involved, you piece of trash, which looks suspicious to me. I, I, I agree with that. But after looking at the whole report, listening to all the testimonies, 
Judge Greer decides that Terry would have chosen to be taken off the feeding tube. So that we have two people now. We have moved it up to a judge that says we should do this. And this is the end of February 2000. So this is already 10 years into fucking Terry being a veggie. All right. This is where Jody says after this happens, Jody, like his new girlfriend, Michael's new girlfriend, says she goes and visits uh, Terry. The only time she ever actually went into the hotel or to the, I said hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, she goes to the hospital room to say goodbye to her, which I find creepy. Like, goodbye, it's finally mine. He also, oh yeah, Michael also gets his nursing degree just after that ruling. Uh, he's actually still a nurse to this day. And then in April, she's moved to hospice to have end of life stuff happen. So uh, the court orders that Terry's brain function needs to be examined by medical professionals before a feeding tube can be removed. So Early 2001, Dr. Ron Crawford completes uh, the medical assessment of Terry's brain function. According to his exam, 80% of her upper brain had been destroyed, some of the lower part as well. Uh, Dr. Crawford said that since so much time had passed since the heart attack and brain damage, that she wasn't in a persistent vegetative state. She was in a permanent vegetative state. This is what this fucking doctor said. <laughs> like, jeez. Wow. Give it to us gently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This doctor probably does not have bedside manner because that's in his report. <laughs> like that's fucking bad. Far out. He also said that it'd been so long since the brain had been damaged that the brain was basically liquid at this point. Oh my god! What yeah. a picture to paint. Yeah. Ooh. Well, yeah. in his defense, his her parents are fighting and advocating for everything, and the husband's like, he's just like, hey, here's what's going on. Do what you want. It's blunt. It's the truth. He's a doctor. He's going by facts, not by emotions. Yeah. Hey, man. Enough people have looked at Terry by now. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. So on April 24th, uh, 2001, Terry's feeding tube was removed and given one or two weeks to live. Yeah. When you die like this, is dehydration, which is kind of sad usually, uh, but it takes a while to wither away. But two days later, the feeding tube is reassumed after a former girlfriend of Michael Schiavo went on the morning radio station and claimed her, that Michael told her that he had no idea what Terry's wishes were actually were. And the Shivos or the Shy, uh, the Schindler, sorry, were listening and they try to file a civil suit against Michael claiming perjury. They were, they were listening because they paid her to say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm with Bo. I just like this. Know that this randomly steps up after it's taken out. Like, no, and they just randomly happen to be watching the same video at the same time. Yeah, it's bullshit. Having the PVR, which is brand new technology in 2001, going. Yeah, it's it's convincing enough for a judge, a Judge Casadilla. Uh, <laughs> Casadilla. Because <laughs> I said that wrong. It's not Casadilla. Delicious. Casada. Casada. I don't know how to say it. Q-U-E-S-A-D-A. Casada. Casada. Yeah, he filed the injunction. And they forced him to put the feeding tube back in her. Wow. Yep. Uh, so in October 2001, the Schindlers tried to motion the Florida Second District Court of Appeals that Greer, Greer Judge Greer, recruit, recuse himself and remove Michael as Terry's guardian. Both motions are rejected by the Court of Appeals. They did, however, the Court of Appeals remand the question of Terry Chavo's wishes back to trial and required an evidentiary hearing to be held. We're back at it, okay? So, but this is this time they say we're gonna have five board certified neurologists testify and see if there's any hope of keeping her alive at all. Oh, I thought you were gonna go with mind reading. No, I'm a doctor. I read her mind. She said, Yeah, yeah. She I I wanna stay on this <laughs> on in this bed. <laughs> no, <they're... laughs> see this brain wave here, that right there is affirmation. She doesn't want to go anywhere. <laughs> Keep paying for the equipment round the clock. I, this is what you want. Yeah. I swear. No, well, that, that's basically what these guys came okay, because listen to how they set this up. Okay. So they have five boards, they're, uh, they're all just testify. You're not wrong, basically. This is what I'm trying to say. So two of them, Michael Shivo, uh, Shivo gets to pick. Okay. Two of them, the Schindlers get to pick. And then they have one like neutral one chosen by the court. So they have a duel. Neurologist tag team match. It's super <laughs> weird. Hunger Games style to the answer. It's so fucking crazy. In preparation for the new trial, they do a bunch of new uh, tests. Uh, a new CAT scan was taken. It showed severe cerebral atrophy. The EEG again, no brain activity. They filmed Terry for like, I've seen multiple reports from like four to five to six hours of her being exposed to stimuli, like her mom coming in. They put balloons up. The doctors were talking to her. <laughs> like it's a party. 
react to these balloons. <laughs> she saw them. She saw them. That's what they say. They boy, they take the later on, they take the film, like the fucking six hours of film, and they clip it down to four and a half minutes of like just Terry coincidentally looking at the balloons or looking at her mom. And they make it look like, oh, they're gonna kill the fucking poor person who's still alive. Look, she's reacting to the balloons. It's how many years is this now? It was 10 before. How many additional hours? We're now at 11. We're at 11 years now. They're almost at 12. They're just starting the 12th year now. Good Lord. And she's still not improving whatsoever. She's not not improving. Her brain is hot jello now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been proven. Hot pot of glue. This is from one neurologist. They'll prove it later. Her head is like an egg. Yeah. Mm. She has like a partial liquid inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually like exactly like an egg, which is disgusting. Thanks for that. <laughs> this is your brain. This is your brain on bulimia. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> on bulimia. Ooh. Uh, Someone needs to put that onto a, uh, a public service announcement. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. The new trial, the, fo- the tag team trial starts early 2002. Judge Greer is presiding over this one now, too. So he gets to do the same fucking He's thing. He's the again. guy who allowed Michael to choose, right? Take her feeding tube out. That seems wrong. Yeah, they put him back on it again. So both experts for the Schindlers were basically like snake oil salesmen, like uh, Celeste was saying, like, keep her on these tubes and they'll, she'll, she'll, her, her veins will get better. And then after that, her brain will, will pop back up and it'll be all good. Don't worry about that. <laughs> apply heat. It will solidify if you apply heat. You're a, like, you're a neurosurgeon. <laughs> You've worked your whole life to get there. And then you're like, oh yeah, check out this fable. Like, how does that work? Judge Greer is hilarious, okay? This is how he responds. He he calls them both out, the two different doctors from the Schindlers, two different ways. And I'm quoting these exactly as they were said because I find it hilarious. So Judge Greer to William Ham, Dr. William Hamasfar, Hamasfar. He says, Dr. Hamasfar testified that he has treated about 50 patients in the same or worse condition than Terry Schiavo since 1994, but he offered no names, no case studies, no videos, no test results, to support his claim that he had success in all but one of them. If therapy is as effective as he would uh, lead this court to believe, it is inconceivable that he would not produce clinical results of these patients he treated. And surely the medical literature would be replete with this new, now patented procedure. So he just fucking eviscerates this guy. I love Judge Greer's hilarious. Replete. That's my new, I'm going to, that is not used enough in my vocabulary. R-E- Can you use it in a sentence? Uh, and he doesn't stop there. He's got another good one. Uh, the other doctor for the Schindlers was named uh, William Mayfield, Dr. William Mayfield. And he said he was confident Terry would improve if she was put into a hyperbaric oxygen therapy. What is that? Hyperbaric. So above the bar- barometer. It sounds scary, whatever it is. I'm hyperventilating. I'm scared. It's, isn't it like an iron lung? Oh. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you sit. Yeah, you sit inside of a big tube, and she would benefit from that. How she would benefit? All we have to do is stick her in a rock and fire her into space. <laughs> Hear me out. Not to mention only her, but the doctor in charge and the handful of nurses that need yeah. to go yeah. with her. They're all stuck in there. Like it's not like you get to come and go. So he says to to uh, Doctor Mayfield, he says it's interesting to note the absence of any case studies. Uh, this uh, since this therapy is not new and this condition has long been in the medical arena. So he just calls them out again. Like, prove it to me, assholes. You guys just keep saying shit. It doesn't make it true. Fuck off, right? He already did this once. So he was already annoyed at this point. Like, I already ruled on this, you pieces of trash. All right, so Judge Greer watched the entire six hours. He didn't just watch the four and a half minutes. And he disagrees that Terry has any response to any stimuli at all. He says, no, she's not responding. You guys are wrong. This is stupid. No, she's not grabbing your head. No, she's not looking at that. I watched the whole thing. So this guy sat down and sat through six hours of that. That fucking must have been boring, but he did it. Boring, but necessary. And he probably did it more than once. Super necessary. He probably stopped at points where they had in the video clip down and went like, nope, that out of context, that looks wrong, right? So the Shivo experts... Uh, an independent one were three different neurologists who came with actual data explaining why Terry's condition was one of PVS and could not be reversed. And the judge didn't question them at all because they actually brought data. Because her brain was liquid. Yeah, yeah. It's basically spinal fluid at this point. 
<laughs> you can't send you can't send electrical impulses into liquid and have it go anywhere constructive. Like, what are they expecting to do? Imagine if they just cut the hole in the back of the head now. It just soups out. Like, it's like when you, you take your boat out of the water, you pull the plug out there to get the water to drain out. Yeah. Go yeah. on. So Judge Greer, as you can imagine, determined that Terry's uh, in a PVS, pervis- persistive vegetative state, and reaffirmed his previous ruling that Terry would, wa- would have wanted to die. So the, this time the ruling was affirmed by Florida Second District Court of Appeal and a date was set for Terry's feeding tube to be removed. That would be October 15, 2003. But the fall of 2002... Oh, God. Stop oh, seeing but oh, God, this is a nightmare. Oh, there's lots still. I hate up. everybody involved with it. Fall 2002, I just want to put this in there. Jody and Michael have their first child. He's still married. He's having kids with her. Man, that's gotta that's gotta hurt. Who? Terry, obviously. Terry doesn't know what's going on. It stings. You don't know that. You don't know what's in the afterlife. You that's don't know. true. She could be sitting. Oh, there as so a ghost. she's in the afterlife now. She's a ghost. A g- 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 ghost. G- 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 ghost. G- 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 gone. Yeah. So September two thousand two, the Schindlers find out about the bone scans in nineteen ninety. And file a motion for a full evidentiary hearing to review the new ca- the, the case because this is new evidence. Oh, good God. They thought now they're thinking that Michael was abusing Terry before her accident. That's why she had all these fractures on her. Like I said, this is fucking from the goddamn fall, the resuscitation, CPR, all that goddamn shit. Did their parents, did her parents know? Her parents knew about the bulimia, right? They don't believe it. They don't believe um, she. They still don't believe it. She went from 115 kilos to 49 kilos. Not on drugs at all. Hard work. Exercise. Right. Proper eating. Iced tea. Iced tea. The iced tea diet. Oh, of course. What an idiot. So once they put that, uh, once they put the motion to have a new hearing, what do you think Judge Greer does? Retires. <laughs> Retires. Denied. Get that the fuck out of here. On the basis of, holy fuck, that happened 12 years ago. What the fuck does that have to do with what's happening now? appeal like he's literally fed up with these fucking people i love judge greer huge bush fucking gigantor bush makes me laugh he's still in this he still comes back so from from that time the end of september 2002 to september 2003 uh all those four and a half minute clips of terry reacting are sent to all the major media stations uh on their website posted on their website uh and the the media cannot get enough of it no oh no, no. Stop. Yeah. cue the catholics yeah oh. all the catholics all the catholics start writing uh all the conservative christians started writing their governor to try and save terry's life the governor at the time was none other than jeb bush he claimed to have gotten twenty seven thousand emails begging him to stop it step in and save terry no i believe that Save her from what? The bed she's bound to for life? You can murder her. She's a Christian lady. You can't murder Christians in my county. Don't go to hell because we don't read the Bible. No, well, isn't she Catholic? So he doesn't. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. But he's he's playing for the vote. He doesn't give a fuck. Like he's yeah. fucking. In, in August 2003, Jeb wrote <laughs> Judge Greer a, a, a letter, very unethically wrote the judge a letter saying, Judge Greer, could you please appoint a new guardian to review Terry's medical condition one last time? Her medical condition that she's been in for over a decade. Every doctor in Florida is an idiot. Every single one. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think our buddy Judge Greer does? Laughs it out. Fuck you. Tells Je- Jeb Bush to go fuck himself. I love yep. it. No, denied. Get the fuck out of here with your... But you don't meddle with the medical stuff. This is not yeah. fuck off. Okay. This isn't your jurisdiction, bitch. Exactly. Greer for Greer for PM. This guy's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Greer. He's awesome. Are you gonna get into what he's doing now? Sorry. Who Schindler? Greer. Greer. Yeah, I'll talk about him a bit at the end. He's my boy in this whole episode. I gotta talk about him. Florida is very divided on this whole subject. There's all the medical professionals saying just let her die, and then there's all the conservative Christians picketing outside of her hospital saying let her live isn't there an abortion clinic they can go picket in front of like this <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't seem like like southern christians to get upset and offended over a small thing it doesn't seem normal <laughs> right <laughs> it seems very abnormal i wasn't really going to mention it because i was kind of going to glaze over it and see what you guys said but you guys picked it 
you guys picked it right up though i i don't like the the undertones of like uh the the abortion thing too because you guys say, said it without me even saying abortion you guys said oh why aren't they at an abortion thing but it has the same feel right like an anti-abortion rally like just let this fucking girl die what do you care so it has this mm. weird tone She's of that stuck too, in a right? bed her entire life it's quality of goddamn life yeah okay well that's that's interesting so uh <laughs> that, that sounded so pointed didn't it <laughs> well that's interesting all right <laughs> no it is it's just it's cool that you guys picked up on it because that's what i was thinking the whole time that's the, the whole mm-hmm. thing i was like this has feels like abortion but it's not it's the opposite it's like yeah old abortion it's a big Abor- life <laughs> murder <laughs> no no you're right it's not murder aborting it's a- the opposite of abortion it's like a uh, out of womb abortion it's a late Anyways. late term abortion uh, yeah very late uh, in, in the 173rd trimester yeah <laughs> <laughs> so september 2000 uh september 11 2003 so this is two years after 9 11 just so- yeah yeah we know we heard it loud and clear it's just funny to me that this is like what jeb bush is dealing with and then george bush is dealing with real things anyways uh <laughs> the sh- <laughs> jeb bush tiny bush all right so we can't blame the bushes for 9 11 at all who is jeb bush yeah. is he related to the other bush he's he's george <laughs> bush's brother yes on september 11th 2003, the Schindlers try again to get the court to delay the feeding tube removal for eight weeks for therapy using this petition. So they're saying, the, see, look how many emails that the governor's getting. Just give us eight weeks, man. Give us eight more weeks. We can fix her. Just give us eight more weeks. One week later. She woke up. They did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they prayed her back, back to health. One week later, actually, our buddy Greer writes a nine page long ruling as to why he's denying your fucking petition douchebags get out of here so again get the fuck out of here judge says uh so terry's feeding tube was to be removed in less than a month's time so then in october 15th 2003 the feeding tube was removed for a second time given another week or two to live now there were protesters outside the hospice where terry was to die there uh was another petition to governor bush to step up and it had uh, 880,000 signatures on this one. Uh, and at the request of Jeb Bush on October 20th, five days after the feeding tube was removed, a special session of the Florida legislature was called and both considered and pa- and they both considered and passed into law what is known as Terry's law. This law gives the governor permission to issue a one-time stay of court ordered withdrawal of life-sustaining measures and to appoint a guardian at litem to review the matter and report back. So basically, they wrote a law that night that specifically covers this, only this case. So state troopers are sent to the hospice and Terry's removed by state trooper brought to Clearview Hospital and put her feeding tube back in six days after it had been taken out. The system works again. That makes me angry <laughs> and in a way I don't have words for. Agreed. Like, I, thought, I thought social media made people stupid and all these petitions and, hey, our opinion matters. No, it, apparently it's been going on for a while. Catholicism. Catholicism. What I can't wrap my head around is what are they trying to achieve? What I can't wrap my head around is what is their end goal, right? It's been 12 years, 12 years. What are they hoping to get on the other side of this? Votes. Oh, it's not about her. It's not about her. It's about just the moral implications of murder. Celeste is absolutely right. They have to be, they are aware of their immortal soul. And now that they know about this, they have to make it their mission to prevent this murder. Otherwise, they might as well be complicit and they're going to hell. And of course, on the politics side of it, it's just they're going to go with whatever the largest voting population is. And in the state of Florida, you're goddamn right. It's the religious nuts. It's, the, it's more of the parents that I don't understand. So it's more of the parents that I don't get it. The parents can't let go. It's control. Oh, yeah. They, they still have it in their mind that Terry's fine underneath there. She just needs a little bit extra help like any other handicapped person. How? They're fucking delusional. They're- I know. That woman has literal yoke. Yoke in her head. And then the, yeah. she's lost 12 years of her life. She will need to learn how to, if she did, by some miracle, all her brain matter went back into a solid state and she started having synapses firing and she woke up. She still needs to learn to walk again. She still needs to learn to eat like, if she can even eat again like what are they hoping yay the neck we're gonna go straight back and go back to normal 
No. They just think at this point, they don't think she's going to be like cured. Let's say they just think that she is still in there and she doesn't deserve to die. She's still, whether she will be, she will not be moving or getting up or anything else, but she is still a life worth saving because there's still a, a light behind her eye. They, they think that she is reacting to them. I don't know if I believe that. That's what they're saying. Like, this is what their, their belief is. Then how in the media. selfish, how endlessly selfish of them how endlessly selfish like i want to keep you alive to make me feel better because i think that behind your eyes there's someone in there and it's going to make me feel better about myself to keep you bedridden for the rest of your actual existence and who knows how long that is because you've been kept alive by tubes you thought you i'm going to die before you are it sounds like our parents might be control freaks maybe i think control is a factor i also i don't know i imagine though like even though you know you're a reasonable person let's say i don't know that they are i'm not really 100 percent sure that i do think they are but imagine actually having the push button on somebody dying imagine like a, like a, a body losing life and you either being the cause indirectly not it i can't imagine what it would be like everyone that i ever know is going to die and it's going to have nothing to do with me probably the only thing I can think about that, about having a push button, right? So if I was that person and, and she'd been dead for 12 years, is it better, in my mind, my the my mind it immediately went to, if I press the button, I live with the guilt of it. But, it, but she is no longer in pain if she's there, right? So is it better that I take the guilt and let her be pain free and disappear into the afterlife that I believe. So I, I'm, I'm imagining I'm Christian uh, again or Catholic or whatever. She's going to go on to a better afterlife. It's so much better for me to take on that guilt so that she moves on, right? Because if I take her life, it's not suicide, which means that she'll go to heaven in the Catholic world. How many times have we heard from people who've lost somebody to say, they, they say, I'd give anything to see them again? Just going and being able to see her face. And knowing that if you put, if you jump on this, if you move forward with this, you will never see her face again, but you actually have to make the active decision to never see her face again. They also have to put in consideration that they're never going to see her be a mother. They're never going to see her succeed in a career. They're never going to see her enjoying life again for sure but the problem with this whole theory is that they have no control over that they could just blame michael the 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 schindlers the schindlers have zero control over whether she lives or die all they're doing is litigating their way into keeping her alive and you know what's fucked up you know what the most fucked up part about that is is neither is fucking terry who is in that much turmoil to put herself into i mean she did not put herself into bulimia bulimia happened to her because that's how she coped with things. That's 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 where her mind went. For sure. I, people I agree. people end up doing a lot of crazy shit for seemingly no reason at all. But there's abs- you know what I mean. It's it's ultimately up to Terry. And I feel that the way that she was going in life, she would not have chosen this. You bring up a good point, though. Terry obviously has a lot of mental problems, a lot of mental illness which means that her folks probably do too. It takes a lot to, as I said in the McNutt episode, to like stare down. You know you're killing yourself. You know you're hurting your body and to keep doing it. She's obviously a sick, she was a very sick woman before this happened. And that shit comes from somewhere. And pain wouldn't have been new to her. Like a, 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 Mm -hmm. a, a hard existence in her body wouldn't have been new to her. I, I think it just, I think it just comes down to that selfishness like like you said Celeste they they want to be able to see that person again they are choosing to keep her there so that they can see her again but that's not fair I figured it out guys oh yeah, yeah okay. here we go go cutie in the red all right that's me I'm in, in gray but thank you <laughs> um so according to Scientific American in 2001 is when the uh, first researching was done on what happens uh, when caterpillars, go into their chrysalis and become butterflies. And what they discovered in that 2001 study is that they basically digest themselves. They explode. Yeah, they turn to goo. Aside from, they basically turn to goo. Like her brain. It's going to be a butterfly. Yeah, let her fly. Set her free. they They did tests. They used to play a sound and shock the caterpillar. Okay? 
And then these caterpillars return to goo, become butterflies. And while they're in this, this containment, they would play this sound. And they would, the, butter, the butterflies would freak out that same sound that came before the shock, but no shock. So they remembered that shock, that sound being associated with a shock, even though they turned to goo, came back. So they were hoping that her brain, they must have read this and been like, it'll, it'll resolve itself and she'll be the person she was. That, that, that's got to be it. It's the only logical reason. Unless they, but they haven't put her in a cocoon at this point. They, they were trying to. They were trying to put her in the iron lung. They wanted to put her in that, <laughs> they wanted to put her in that thing. <gasps> the hyperbolic chamber. There oh, my go. God. Yeah, that's it. That's- I love the image of a butterfly flying around inside her head, though. Me, too. I can't deny that. Well, here's speaking of a butterfly. Here, I got some more stuff. Uh, just after they put her two back in, uh, Jody has her second baby with Michael. Oh, I mean, I can't not be happy. You know what I mean? Like, fucking christ michael wanted babies right yeah he did so terry's law was overturned by the supreme court on september 23rd 2004 uh so right away unconstitutional jeb bought enough time to get terry's food thing put back in though so that was enough for that was enough for them uh it was overturned because not on medical ethics but more on legal stuff uh, they just didn't want the government to be able to p- tell people what medical procedures they should get, right? Uh, the government shouldn't have to, to come in and tell you, you need to get this or you don't need to get that. Uh, and, and Jeb Bush actually made history. He was, what they think, they could be wrong, but they think he was the first governor to order a specific medical act be done on someone, put a fading tube in. So good for you, buddy. You made you, you made the history books, you piece of trash. From here, uh, on in the Schindlers try anything to try to appeal to the court, but they are all rejected, like every other avenue they have. So on March 17th, U.S. Senator Bill Frist and Michael Enzi announced that Terry Schiavo or Shivo would be called to testify before the U.S. Senate Committee. Well, wait, Terry. Yeah. The vegetable. The vegetable. The vegetable. They subpoenaed her. They to subpoenaed her to go you, okay. testify. Whoa, hold the fuck up. How do you subpoena someone <laughs> when you can't even verbalize that you are you? Uh, they knew oh, she was yeah. show up, Charlie. Because when you get handed documents, you have to say who you are. <laughs> what they were trying to do, they knew she wasn't going to show up. They knew that it wasn't going to work. What they were trying to do is put her, uh, if she's you uh, testifying for the Senate committee, that puts her in witness protection. Meaning they had to put the feeding tube back in no matter what. They have to keep it in until this is done. Okay, no, that's actually like brilliant. Uh, that's actually seems very illegal. It's terrible. It's awful. It's unethical. It's cringy. It's awful. It's brilliant. It's very smart. Was she an only child? No, she has a brother who's, who's very vocal. As oh, well. God, Bobby. they procreated twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Which means... Excuse me, sorry, which means that they are not following the letter of the law of their religion because they are not supposed to use any form of child, any sort of contraception. So if they're fully... Catholic, you don't they know. Have... They fucked two times. That's it. That's it. Missionary, in and out, no one gets hurt. And then only did it in the bum after that. Yes. Out the bum, no babies. Like a good Catholic girl. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call a Catholic condom when I was growing up. Put it in my butt. Then I'm still a virgin, right? Sure. All right. Um, <laughs> that was an involuntary gag. I, I praise the universe that I never grew up religious. I thought you were going to say, I praise the universe. I've never done it in the butt. You know what? I, same diff. One more huge Bush move. <laughs> yeah. By, some... do- by our buddy, Judge Greer. Yes! Come on, Greer. Help us out, Greer. He strikes down that subpoena saying it's unconstitutional. You can't subpoena someone. Uh, that's in a vegetative state, you piece of shit. So Judge Greer stopped that one right before it happened. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, that's already legally bound. If you can't place your hand on the Bible and give your statement. And put your other hand up. Right, right. You gotta do both, right, right. She doesn't have to be a puppet that day. Her parents up in the drop ceiling. (laughs) We got it. We got it. Don't touch her. Obvious mic right here. Sorry. (laughs) So the day after they tried to do that subpoena thing, Terry's feeding tube was removed for the third time. Dude, this thing's going in and out so much. It's like they're... It, it, <laughs> it's like what? It's like, it's what, Celeste? 
Uh, <laughs> then on, on two days good. later, Congress passed a bill that allowed sh- the Shivo case to be moved to a federal court. The bill was passed in Senate unanimously with a three to zero vote. 97 senators didn't make the vote. So with three people, they passed a law that got passed down to Congress. 97 senators tapped out? No, it was a holiday weekend. It was Palm Sunday. Oh, this is brilliant. Yeah, that's what they do over here. That's what they tried to do is do it on a holiday. Do you see how the American legal system works? So once the bill was passed in Senate, it was quickly moved to the House of Representatives at 9 p.m. that evening. The House passed the bill after much deliberation on an unusual Saturday-Sunday session at 12.41 a.m. This bill passed 203 to 58 uh, vote, where 156 Republicans and 47 Democrats in favor. Barack Obama, when he was a congressman, voted for this law to be instituted. Uh, He was later vocal while campaigning to be president that this vote was one of the biggest regrets in his entire career. Oh, that one. Good job. Like I said, this was Palm Sunday. And to sign the law into actual law, President George Bush flew in from holiday in Texas to sign it in at 1.11 a.m. And he made a fucking show out of it. Who was so who was the elected president? It was George W. Bush. Okay. Uh, basically what this does, it wasn't a law that was, uh, applied to Terry. It applied to Bob and Mary. And for what it does, it gave federal courts jurisdiction to review this specific case de novo in light of the recently discovered bone scan results and all the new evidence they say they have. But de novo just means with no regard to prior state court rulings. So this would wipe out seven years of rulings (sighs) by 19 judges in six different courts. Dude, I'm going to stroke and I'll become a vegetable. Yeah. I'm, I'm props, Richard, for looking into fucking U.S. laws like this. Like, it's, it's in, impeccable. There was even, like, a point, and this is kind of going off subject a bit, but there was a point where there was a memo floating around the Republican Party saying, back Terry Schiavo, it's good for your political career right now. Back this Terry Schiavo thing. And it was hidden. It was like a secret memo. But one of the Democrats got it sent accidentally, and he fucking leaked the shit out of it. And everyone's like, uh-oh. It, it actually kind of went against them later on. But anyways. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. So this would wipe out, like I said, seven years of rulings by 19 judges in six different courts. I am genuinely aroused by this ingenuity. <laughs> Uh, it's it's super smart and it's fucking like the bushes aren't uh aren't the most ethical of people but they're smart politicians and they know how to get shit done and i'm fucking exhausted it. by the amount of effort that is going in like that is it is they are putting so much effort in talk about not caring about your kid yeah they're putting so much effort in to make her life more miserable yeah michael Scheibel like says later on he's like i don't give i don't know why people care that much about this. this happens every day why did everyone care so much about this he just he was so baffled by the whole thing but he stuck anyways we'll keep going okay so federal as soon as this happens federal courts start to reject the appeals by the schneiders immediately federal good. courts are like fuck this we are not touching this right good the u.s supreme court rejects the parents appeal two times in march 2005 all of which supported our main man Greer's judgments. He, Judge Greer was fed up. He, he went up to his buddies uh, in federal court and said, do not fucking do this. They're retards. Get them the fuck out of here. I shouldn't say that. Let's do that sentence again. Uh, get them out of here. They are slow. Uh, anyways. Uh, no, that's no better. <laughs> that wasn't better. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> they are not thinking clearly. Greer used his fucking, his power to, to stop that, right? Yeah. So on March 23rd, 2005, the Pope opens up, goes on the ne- television and says, Terry should be kept alive. What are you guys doing, America? Look at this case again. So the Pope weighs in on this. Fuck off, Pope! Isn't the Pope busy with little boys? What the <laughs> hell is he doing dabbling his hands into American... I mean, I know why he's American politics. But still. Well, why is he so interested? Because she's a woman. Yeah, he's not interested in that. He says, the question of life and death is up to God and God alone. You guys should stay out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then take her off all the medical intervention. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I said. Easy. Like, come on. You just proved their point for them. Shut the fuck up, Pope. You're an idiot. Pope John Paul. That's who that was. John Paul. By March 27th, Terry has read her last rites. And at the age of 41, at 9.03 a.m., 15 years after her accident and 15 years as a vegetable, Terry dies. Thank fucking Christ. Thank God. The poor woman. Poor woman for sure. 
And from the time her feeding tube was removed until the day she died, there were uh, protesters, civil rights activists, news media, and rallies outside Terry's hospice begging for people to feed her. Disabled activists were calling for a continued care. They were saying, how could you, what if I'm I next because I'm disabled? Are you going to kill yes. me? So how the fuck do you tell a guy who's in a wheelchair to shut the fuck up, right? Like, get the fuck out of here, wheelchair guy. Apparently just like that. Roll on, yeah. wheelchair guy. <laughs> Roll on. Yeah. So, oh. uh, and a bunch of religious nuts were claiming their values and beliefs in the sanctity of life were being stomped on. Uh, I say to that, fuck you and hail Satan. Uh, they legit had kids holding four foot jesus statues when he was on the cross bleeding going like we're in the right like get the fuck out of here with your like torture porn making your kids carry around torture porn for some chick you don't even know fuck the catholic church so if that's what you if that's what your personal beliefs are when you become a vegetable or when your mom becomes a vegetable you do it this isn't a yeah. uh, fuck off yeah you don't yeah. know this person you don't know this person Hey, 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 that's their sister. They're all children of God. <laughs> no wonder people hate religious people, man. You do crap like that. <laughs> it's true, though. You're not wrong because most religious people just want to be in a community and like hope that when they die, everything's good to go. Not the, the fundamentalism shit like this is fucking psycho and it bugs me. But what part of Jesus' story makes you think he wants you parading pictures of him dying on a cross? But what makes you think he likes crosses? He probably hates them. He died on one. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't even white. Yeah, he wasn't. He was Middle Eastern. Also that. On June 15th, a couple months after her death, uh, they send her for an autopsy. Oh, no, sorry. They send her for an autopsy and the results are ready by June 15th. Uh, it's confirmed al what almost every doctor said in this story, that she's in a persistent vegetative state. She would not have had any voluntary function. Her brain was half the weight of a normal brain of a woman her size. They also found out that Terry was blind, proving her reacting to her mother and the balloons and all those fucking clips were nothing. She was legitimately blind. Uh, involuntary. I can't say it enough in this thing. The medical examiner said the damage was irreversible and... No uh, amount of therapy or treatment would have regenerated the massive loss in neurons. No sign of tra uh, traumatic activity, because, of course, Michael was a fucking good guy to her the whole time. Uh, Bush, President Bush, held to his gun, saying that her feeding tube should have never been removed. This is a travesty to our country. Put a feeding tube in you, Bush. Yeah, exactly. Fuck that guy. Uh, and Terry was cremated in June. In 2007, Terry was in USA Today as one of the top 20 people that have changed lives in this past decade. Uh, would she rank now, do you guys think? Do you think she would be someone no. like, exactly. It's I take, I used to take care of people just like this and not one fucking visitor. They were happy exactly. to see me of all fucking people. The only yeah. thing that I could say about that, trying to play the devil's advocate a bit here, is... If if this gave precedence for people to fight, like for people to fight for their loved ones in custody, uh, in custody, oh, in um in a like in in hospitals, and they did have a positive outcome, like of course, you know, it's called it, prognosis. It, it's not it's not necessarily like that. Maybe it's only one or two. So the only thing I could think about is if if. If it did help doctors to take a second look and it did change some people's outcome, yeah, probably this is a good thing that was brought to light in a, in a sense, trying to play the devil's advocate here, to make doctors take a second look and maybe find something different. That's the only thing I can think that would make a positive, like, promise you difference. it's not going to take one single act to do it. It's going to take every single patient, nurse, and doctor to do it all at once. What are you talking about? All of all of the fairy tales and stories I grew up taught me that one person can make a massive. Did anybody break. just kiss her? Did nobody kiss her? No <laughs> one kissed her. No one. Yeah, fuck. That was. <gasps> no one was just walking through the lobby and saw some chick sleeping there and just just well, planted lips. No. Judging by what you guys said you would do to me if I was in a PVS, uh, maybe someone <laughs> fucked her mouth. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's not what happened in the fairy tale, though. <laughs> All right, so at the end of this whole thing, 
Michael and the Schindlers were still furious with each other. They never spoke afterwards. Uh, they can't even bury the hatchet at all. None of it. They had separate funerals. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Oh, what? Shit. What? 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 <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I've never heard of a bigger fuck you than having separate fucking funerals. Who got to go wow. first? Okay, so I'm sorry, but did they, did they like bury her, dig her up? take her to a different view i think they separated they the, ashes. The, oh, the ashes oh uh, you know what i don't think they had i think no michael had the whole thing michael got the whole thing they got yeah. nothing they're not they have nothing to do with her fucking care or any of it like michael got oh, the so they had urn. like a memorial yeah mm. they had a funeral yeah. they had a full-blown like closed casket fucking funeral all right so there's uh on michael's gravestone for terry because there's two Oh my God. I mean, I love this girl. She's like a queen now. She gets two of everything. She probably has two birthdays. She's too. a child of divorce. Like, let's just give her two birthdays. Two Christmases. <laughs> She's divorced, dead person. All right. <laughs> Shared uh, custody. You get to go to grandma's house for this funeral. All right. Uh, mm. There's three dates on her, on her uh, Michael's gravestone. It has her birth date, her fall date, and her death date. With a final note from Michael that reads, I kept my promise. Oh, oh, nice. Which he says uh, he was proud to have kept. And this is a quote. He was proud to have kept. And if she was watching him from heaven, she would agree with and thank him. His promise was not to keep her alive. His promise was to take care of her until the end. Stay with her until life, death do us part. He was still with her doing things like while they, while they were fighting to pull the plug, right? Like he was still there. He was still there taking care of her like his one big brag is he she never got a bed sore once not once because he took he went there and he made sure she was getting the proper care he, he brought like i said he would always i said it earlier he'd bring her clothes bring her perfume makeup everything he, he yeah he let his new his new wife like do her makeup and her hair now <laughs> he's married to jody he got married a year after and he's got two kids with her uh J- mike got joe uh new wedding ring but he also wears a second wedding ring uh one fashioned out of the ring terry had gotten from michael during the first wedding he asked jody first if it was okay and she was cool with him wearing two wedding rings so he said he could be with terry and her for the rest of his life uh he's he's now a nurse in a jail the last i heard oh my god this guy has a literal heart of gold i'm so touched yeah no he's great uh I hope he gets to live in peace. I personally think that Michael Schiavo has the uh, biggest bush in the universe. That's a yeah. lot of shit he had to go through for this. Judge Greer has the second biggest ju- fucking bush in the universe. And uh, Mike's girlfriend, Jody has a hard three on all these things. Uh, yeah. This is a heart, a heart. She's got a heart bush. Th- this is a very sad story, but it also gives me hope. Uh, it makes me think that while the media and religious nuts are fucking with everything all the time, there's still reasonable and good people out there doing the right thing. And, uh, it's a happy story. You know, it's, it's, it, to me, it's, it came out with all the honest, good heads prevailed It fucking took 15 years, but this judge Greer guy, uh, got it done. Okay. And one big, huge shout out to judge Greer. Uh, just so everyone knows he got so many death threats during this time. No doubt. All from Catholics. From big Catholics, yep. Uh, during the court, during, before, and after. Right now, to this day, he still gets hate mail about. Do this. You guys miss you missed the memo about not murdering people, or you just pick yeah. and choose which? Oh, they're Catholic, right? They just pick and choose what they want. Oh, they just pick and choose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had no game in this. He had no uh, uh, horse in this race. Really, he was just a guy in the middle, and he stuck to his guns for like over four or five years for Terry's uh, care, and he made the right choices, in my opinion. Uh, I love this guy. I love George. I love all three of these people. It was very new heroes of mine. This is a crazy story to me. 15 years beside your wife trying to just let her die and a judge who had to fight every person in the goddamn United States to do it. Yeah, I don't see them on the cover of a magazine. All she did was fall down and she gets a cover. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't she have a heart attack? Give her something. She can't even think. At least they can still think. Give her the cover. She can't even think. Yeah, but she didn't do anything. Someone, she fell down and then matter. she laid there and got Celeste, her makeup done. She got like she can't stand up for herself. Medical ca- she can't stand up at all. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Judge George Greer, 
he's writing a book right now about the whole thing and uh i'll probably buy it just for support the old fucker and i love him what a journey <laughs> a ride what? from start to finish yeah I don't believe in heaven, but I really hope she's standing up there at the pearly gates, like right next to whatever fucker stands there and is like, not that one, not that one, not that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I hope, I hope she's standing up there waiting for Michael. That's what I hope. That's going to be crowded. guys thanks so much for listening head on over to our facebook and instagram to join in on the conversations about all things unethical just search unethical podcast you can also find us on patreon where you can get access to all of our super awesome content uncut videos of our discussions and early release of all the episodes we are adding fun stuff all the time so you should definitely come and check it out thanks again we appreciate all of you I am a flamer. Like, you should see how many dicks I suck. I put them all in my mouth.